Okay, welcome back everybody. Uh, this week's gun facts, we're going to give you about three useful little terms. This is Eric and Barry from Moss Pond again. And uh, well, first we're going to talk about how a gauge of a shotgun is determined. Okay, these are cylinder bore. The cylinder bore of a 12 gauge is 729. If you take 12 lead balls that size to that equal a pound, then you got a 12 gauge. 16 gauge is 662. 16 lead balls that size will weigh a pound, 16 gauge. 20 gauge is so on and so forth. Now 410 is not a gauge. 410 is a caliber. If it was a gauge, it would be approximately 67 and a half gauge. Why they don't call it a gauge, I don't know, but the 410 has always been that way. Now, going down the scale here, uh, a lot of your red light, uh, red dot sights like this Conus, a lot of your lighted scopes and so on and so forth use uh, 2032 batteries. Now, if you buy them at the drugstore or whatever, they're around $250 to $3 a piece. If you buy these tea lights from the dollar store, you get 32 batteries in here. 32 batteries of 16 and 16 in the tea lights for $10. That's equivalent to 33 cents a piece. 33 cents a piece. Well, you say, well, those are cheap foreign-made batteries and they don't last very long. Well, I put one in this site 105 hours ago, and it's still the dot is still visible. Can you get a shot through that area? I can. The dot is still visible after 105 hours of continuous use. I don't care how long the battery that costs two fifty dollars lasts. 33 cents got me 105 hours. Of course, this is a site you're not going to leave on all the time anyway. You're only going to use this when you need it. But that's a little Kona site. Now, we put these on, we put these on uh, Sega shotguns, Ruger 1022s. This is a great little site for just about anything. It costs a little more than $100. Now, we're going to talk about where did the Smith & Wesson 40 caliber come from. The daddy of the 40 is the 10 millimeter, developed for the FBI. Uh, Jeff Cooper himself, Mr. 45 man, determined a long time ago that 40 caliber was an ideal police caliber. So the 10 millimeter was developed for the FBI. They could not qualify with this cartridge, it was too powerful. This is almost equivalent to a 41 Magnum. So what they did. They shortened it. This stands for Smith & Wesson, 40 Smith & Wesson. Short and wimpy. Or it could stand for 10 millimeter short and weakened. Okay? That's where the uh, 10 millimeter, the 40 develop, was developed from the 10 millimeter. Now, it's an ideal police caliber. Eight out of ten cops in this country carry a 10 millimeter, usually a Glock. Now, we're looking down here at these cartridges. That's your 10. That's your 40. It's the same cartridge, it's just shortened. Later on, they developed the 357 SIG. It's nothing but a 40 neck down to shoot a 357 caliber bullet. Now, very few law enforcement agencies use the 357 SIG. It's a good idea, but it does not have the same stopping power as a 40. So you gain nothing by going to the 357 SIG. An interesting note is if you have a 357 SIG semi-automatic, you can change the barrel. All you have to do is change the barrel to a 40 and you got two guns. But there's really no advantage to having the 357 SIG over the 40. The ammunition is more expensive and harder to find. So uh, we've run down a few facts for you this week and I hope they've been helpful to you. And uh, we're going to be doing this gun facts about once a week, and we'll give you three or four more little tips as we go along, and I hope these things are helping y'all out. Y'all have a good evening now, and we want to thank you for your business and your support of the YouTube channel. It's, it's taking off like wildfire, and we get calls all day long about people who love these videos, and we, we enjoy doing them. So y'all have a good one. Thanks, people.